today I'm going to talk about how to detect duplicates in a data set within Bubble and then what to do to manage those duplicates. So how can we get rid of uh, one of them? And also some best practices to avoid ha having duplicates data generated within your, your database if you want to avoid something like that. So let's get right into it. First of all, we're going to take a look at a data set that's already been supplied to us with duplicates, and we're going to find those duplicates. So to do that, we first we have to load up a list, uh, our target list. So I've already loaded a list. This is our example data here. It's, it's some made up data for client work, and that's what we're going to use. So you can already see just from looking at this, there's a couple duplicates in here. So there's a personal brand websites, the same name, same price, uh, same number of weeks and site and everything. Uh, and we just want to organize that information because you can imagine uh, this is a small data set because uh, it just took me a little while to come up with all these different um, names and everything. But if we had a really big data set, it's obviously inefficient just to, to look at the set, data set and then figure out the duplicates by hand. So we want to write, write a program that's going to find them. So to do that, Let's go over to the bubble editor in the page that we have displayed a repeating group because that's, that's what we're doing here. We're displaying a repeating group with the information that we want. So whoops, gonna undo that. So we're gonna actually, I'm gonna increase the size of this repeating group and then I'm gonna add another repeating group inside of it. So let's go. And this will make sense in a minute what we're doing. So now we're going to add another repeating group and we're going to call this repeating group or toss this right in here. We'll call this group duplicate user list. Okay. And this will be actually not duplicate user. We're going to call this duplicate job list because these are, these are jobs that we're editing. So type of content is going to be the type of duplicate data we're looking for, which in this case is a job post. Now, the next thing we're going to do before we go in and modify this more is uh, we're going to click on our repeating group job post here. I'm going to modify this data source. So we're going to say, do a search for job post more, and then scroll down, keep scrolling down to group by, add a new grouping, field to group. Now here's where we're going to def define what criteria constitutes duplicate data. For our example, we're going to say if this job title is the exact same and the client budget is the same, then these records, we will call them duplicate. And you can add more than one field here to specify multiple criteria that you consider to be a duplicate. So it's, it's up to you here. For us, we'll just use two examples. So first we have budget. So, and then we want to group this by the exact match. Add a new grouping. And this one's going to be title. So title, exact match. Okay, so that looks good. Now we've grouped these listings by the same title and uh, and the same budget, but we still have this repeating group inside of here. And this is essentially because we're displaying a list in here, and within each of these cells is going to be a group of of a uh, job posts that we want to display. And that's what we're doing right here. So we're going to go in here and say job posts, current cells, groupings. And then here's where we will say, actually uh, do a search for job posts. Who's here. We go down to title is equal to current cells, groupings, title, whose budget is equal to current cells, groupings, budget. So now we're mapping this information. So we want to, display, we want to say this, make sure this is a, just says job posts. There we go. So, so the key here is whatever criteria you're using to define the duplicate data, you want to make sure that that's, you've added that down here in the constraints in this uh, little, this list that we've added inside of the cell. Now we're going to adjust the rows here and I'm just going to change this to like a solid separator. These are some basic things I'm doing to the design. And I'm gonna drag this out. You don't have to do this necessarily exactly like this. So now I'm gonna bring this, let's see, let's just bring this up like this. And we'll actually, let's go down to one, one row, and then we're gonna do a full list. And then I'm gonna send this to the back. 
I'm going to bring all this information in. So we're going to say, boom, this is going to say current sales groups, job post title. That's, that's good. Send this to the back, move this around a little bit. Okay. Current sales job, job post budget. That's good. So send this to the back again, this is going to display the project timeline. Okay. Send this to the back and now this is also going to play the display the category. So I'm actually just adding these pieces of text into this repeating group in here. Um, and they're mapping nicely. So let's also increase the rows now to two. So we can see what that looks like. And we're going to actually, we're going to keep going with this, the, this into, into the mix as well. There we go. Okay. And then the, this we're going to say, insert dynamic data. Here's where we're actually going to define the parent group in here. So we're going to say, um, let's say this to be current sales grouping type grouping. So yeah, just specify current sales grouping in here. It'll show up in here. Then we're going to edit this text and it's going to say parents, parents groupings title. And move this on over. And this one's going to be parent groupings budget. And we'll leave these other two fields alone for right now. Move this down a bit, bring this on up, center horizontally. And let's actually, let's make this a bit wider as well. Cause what we're going to do is we're going to throw in a delete button to manage our duplicate data. Okay. Let's test it out. Now I'm going to center this horizontally and see if we are properly organized organized. Okay. We're almost there. So you can see we have the groupings, but we still have single items showing up. So to get rid of that, what we're going to do is go back to this grouping and we're going to go in here and say, uh, grouped by budget, just add out more. And we're going to say filtered by actually let's, let's do it within here. Add a new aggregation. We'll say count and by count is greater than or equal to two. Okay. Now let's test it out and we should only see duplicates now. Now that we have our data properly organized into the groups that are greater than two, or greater, greater than one, we can see uh, all the information that's, that's duplicated. So to get rid of this, it's, there's a, a few options that we have. First option is to delete one of the duplicates that we don't like. The other option we have is to merge the duplicates, or obviously we can also leave them the same. And each of these presents their own unique challenge. If we're going to be marking duplicates as, as they're acceptable, so remove them from this list, that's possible. It's going to involve some more advanced computations uh, and ver additional variables in our system that, that we can do. And I will go into as well as merge. And that's going to be on our website. If you want to check out those further details in this example, uh, and on this video, we're just going to delete the duplicate record. So I'll show you how to delete a record in bubble. It's a relatively simple operation. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to an icon and that's what we're going to use as our essentially so I'm using ionic icon. That's going to be our, essentially our clickable element, like our button and ionic icon. If you don't know, you can just go to plugins and add a plugin search for ionic search for ionic and it will show up. And this is just another list of, uh, of different elements. There's, there are lots of really cool L of icons. I mean, it's, uh, that are really handy to have in your app that I always like to use. So now you know how to get those if you want to use the same button. So click on delete or so I will search for delete. Boom. Here's our little trash can. I'm going to center this vertically. And now we're going to say start shut workflow, delete current sales job posts. And that's it. Now we're going to be able to delete one of those duplicate records. And that's going to be one way that we have to trim those lists down. So let's, let's check it out in action. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of one of these here. So, boom, just like that, gone. Now what about this one here, this uh, CRM for public schools? I'm gonna get rid of one of those, boom. And now we can also reload the page and that's no longer gonna show up. As you can see, only this one's gonna show up because it's the only duplicate in our system. So awesome. Now I'm gonna talk about what we can do to avoid those problems in the first place. So when we're creating objects in Bubble, we can set aside some only when conditions and I'll show you that. So if we were to say have, let me create a new page here, say test demo, create. And let's say we have some inputs, like in this case, we had job title. So whoops. So input and say we had a job title. And then we also had the budget and that's what we were, these two needed to be different than anything else in our system. So what we can do is at the point of where data is entering our system from these inputs that we've built on other parts of our site, we'll have like a button, right? So button and some inputs. Okay. Job title, job budget. And then we'll just say, let's call this create job. What we can do is, uh, is click on create job. So when the action where we're creating the, the data in our system, so create a new thing. And in this case, it's going to be job post whose budget is equal to input, but job budgets value, whose title is equal to input job titles value. Now to avoid a duplicate, at this point, what we want to do is go to this only when section down here and we say, do a search for now, what type are we creating? We're creating a job post. So we would select the type that we are creating here. And now we're going to do a search. We're going to search the database and we want to search the database for a budget that's equal to input job budgets value, search the database for a title that is equal to input job titles value. Now we want to say first item is not empty. So what this is doing is it's going to do a search. It's saying, uh, search for the, well, we'll say when the search search item is empty actually. And what, what this is doing is it's, it's searching for another record in our database. We're telling, telling our app, okay, go look for another job post with the same budget and title that we've entered that our user entered right here. And if that record exists, because we've taken a list, cause it's, we're searching for a list, which will return a list of information. We're saying, okay, we'll just take the first item out of that information. And let's see if there's anything in there. If the first item is, is empty, then we know the whole list is going to be empty. And that, that's just a principle that you can apply to bubble. If you want to figure out, um, if you want to have a way to use yes or no's with the search, it's a great. It's an excellent, excellent tool for many other operations in Bubble, and I use it very frequently. Um, and this is just one specific instance where we're using it. And in this case, we'll say only do this one, then this, there is no dupl duplicate value with budget and title that we've entered. And what we can do is also we can add a, an alert. So we could go in here and we could say, um, job post already exists in our system. Okay. Or whatever alert you want to have there. And then you could just say this username is already taken. For example, if you were assigning unique usernames to your users, you'd have show a message in here and you'd say, see job posts are the alert that we just created. And we'll go in here, copy this expression, right click, copy, right click, paste. And we want to say is not empty. So now we're saying, well, when we find a duplicate, display this message so our users know that that, that record already exists. And, and that's it. That's going to protect our database from this duplicate problem. However, the reason I showed you guys how to find duplicates in a system is because sometimes you bring in, in old data or you didn't know this best practice um, when you didn't build it deliberately into your database in the beginning. So now you know how to do that. I hope that, that was super, super valuable. And in the... Link in the description, there's going to be a, a link to our website where you can see a more detailed tutorial where we're going to merge the two lists together. 
and merging the data is going to take a little bit longer. It's going to take us another five, 10 minutes to accomplish that goal. But it's uh, also something that if you're interested in, you can learn how to do it. something I've recently worked on with the, with a client. So uh, it's definitely something that can be in demand depending on the type of project you're working on. And it's a good skill to have. You should definitely check out our website at newagedevelopment.bubbleapps.io and create an account so you can access our community where we will answer your questions about uh, debugging applications, getting clients as a web developer, specifically with Bubble, um, any sort of questions you have related to web development in Bubble so that you can become an expert and you can build anything that your imagination uh, unleashes online and you can be an awesome software developer. That's our goal of this website and I would really love to see you there. We also have in-depth courses that will turn you into an expert and they're really step-by-step, -step, uh, even more in-depth and uh, in greater detail than we have in these YouTube videos. So you'll accel it'll accelerate your pace to becoming an expert. That's what our, we wanna do for you.